But um, we'll talk a little bit about knowledge transfer and personal performance. And another topic um, you, an expert in, is really kind of digital motivation or gamification, mm -hmm. right? So how is that now all come together? Yeah, so I think gamification is... The term is actually, you know, s scaring a lot of people off. Yeah, so that's why I said digital, digital motivation, maybe. That's yeah, why I think I've even motivation is, is, I think, one part of it. So gamification. Um, the way I, I look at gamification is, I would like to say that it's, it's slightly different than what most gamification practitioners do. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it is that it's actually a big data discipline. Mm -hmm. It's basically, you know, what gamification is trying to do is that, like, if you talk to a lot of gamification practitioner, is that you have essentially a, a user here, right? And then the user exhibits some kind of behavior, and then throws through behavior tracking, uh, so the user has some uh, essentially behavior, behavior, right? And then so you, if you track that behavior, then that becomes behavior data, right? So these are like essentially. data, right? And then those behavior data then essentially fed through, essentially, I would say, almost like a, I call it a rules engine. Right. Right. And then the rules engine basically can say, okay, when you exhibit certain behavior, I want to trigger some kind of feedback, right? Right. So that rules engine triggers some kind of feedback that essentially is delivered by essentially some kind of feedback mechanism. As simple as a batch. Yeah, as simple as a batch. Or as complicated as, Yeah, you know. a, a rank, a reputation, or right. some the conferring of something, right? So you, that feedback mechanism then feeds back uh, to the user. Saying, okay, the behavior. Yeah, is this behavior desirable or not, right? Yeah. Are you getting a batch because you uh -huh. did something right, or, or, or you did something that's not desirable, so I'm going to not give you something that other right. people have. <laughs> so, so I take 10 points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so pe pen penalty, you know, in theory works, but in, in practice it actually uh, doesn't work too well because right. people essentially what end up is that people abandoning the system, the, the, system. the overall yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. so well. they just, uh, uh, this is not fun, so I'm not going to play. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, this is usually gamification is, is uh, the opt-in. Yeah. 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 yeah, so basically you have, you have behavior tracking, right, and then you have essentially, you know, these uh, behavior uh, analytic, right, Yep. To essentially summarize this data, and then these data then fed into a rules engine, right? The uh, rules engine then essentially have essentially these uh, rules that are triggers that trigger some feedback mechanism that gets feedback to the user. Right? Right. So as you can see, that to me, gamification is really a big data discipline because right. people generate a lot, a lot of behavior data, data every single day, right? The, mm -hmm. Everything they do Click. digitally can be track, right? Mm -hmm. And they turn into behavior data, mm -hmm. right? And once they become behavior data, then you could do interesting, you know, uh, analytics. And so this this is the loop, right? Mm -hmm. This is the loop that drives behavior, mm -hmm. right? So, and if you want to look at uh, what a gamification system really is, right? So a, a kind of well-designed, complete gamification system or platform, right? Right, gamification platform. Right, it, it's really this three component. Mm -hmm. right? So there is a behavior data uh, kind of store, and there's a actual rules engine. The, so what typically a lot of people focus on is the feedback mechanism. Right. The, the entire industry is focused on oh, how should badges. I design the badges to feedback <laughs> to the user? Yeah. How should I give the points? Right? right. I mean, so but and some people, more sophisticated people, start saying okay. Based on like you know, depending on like what you do, I, I need to look at the rules engine too. Basically, yeah. like how much, how many points should I give you? How many badge? How frequent? So that's determined by the rules, mm -hmm. the rules and the rules engine, right? So, and but ultimately underneath all this is all of this thing is is, is big data, right? Right. So so that's kind of how I you know. I, I see, you know, the the connection between gamification and, and big data uh, and my work. And and who in the industry now put machine learning in the middle so that instead of having kind of a pre-coded uh, rule engine, the rule engine learns? Yeah, very few. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, so when I talk to company about you know data and analytics, you know, I usually talk about three types, three classes of uh, analytics, mm -hmm. and the three classes are basically. Uh, descriptive analytic, right? Uh, 
and then predictive. Yeah. So that's where we sit, right? Yeah. Data Mia is all about descriptive. And prescriptive. Mm -hmm. Right. So descriptive is all about like you summarizing data that already exists. I call it shake and bake analytics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or traditionally what we call reporting, right? Yeah, so it's very so, straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. So so even a lot of the traditional BI business intelligence is descriptive, right? And predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics are a little more advanced. So predictive analytics is actually all about using data that you have access to to estimate data that you don't have, right? And that's so a lot of people think of predictive analytics as a predicting the future, right? Uh -huh. And that's actually only one very specific use case of, uh -huh. of predictive analytics. Right? Basically, it's a special case because the future data are data that you don't have, the historical right. data are data it's that just, you have. Right? It's just time series data, yeah. yeah. So you, you're trying to use data that you have, which are historical data, to estimate you know, future data that uh -huh. you, you can't have. So, yeah, so that's predictive analytics. And then prescriptive analytics is about essentially optimizing something. Right? Uh -huh. Essentially, uh, you, for example, I would say the simplest. Okay, so the simplest example of predictive analytics is is a trend line. Mm -hmm. right? Everybody understands a trend line. Right? It tells mm -hmm. you, you know, how the trajectory will go. Right. The simplest prescriptive analytics is a GPS. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm trying to go from A to B. So What's the GPS the is going to prescribe a path for right. you how to go from A to B. Yeah. And they're essentially what is. What it's doing is, is optimizing something. It's optimizing for the shortest distance, mm -hmm. right? But there are actually different things you can optimize. You can optimize for time, for right. So prescriptive analytics. So this is about you know summarize, uh, right? This is about you know estimate, right? Estimating an unknown quantity from data that you have. This is about optimizing something, uh, right? So this is. Um, the three type of analytics that I talk about. So, to be honest, I I would confidently say like over ninety nine percent of the uh, uh, analytics using gamification today is descriptive. Yeah, and right. and, and a hard coded rule engine. Yes. Um, switching gears a little bit. What's yeah. your what's your weapon of choice? Uh, MATLAB, Python, um, R. I actually uh, I'm not too religious uh -huh. about you know uh, my choice of weapon. Mm -hmm. My choice of weapon depends on what I'm trying to who I'm trying to kill. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so it depends on the, actually the data size, right? Uh -huh. So if it's really big, then I write stuff in pig and high, you know, to uh -huh. aggregate it down to a smaller, uh -huh. manageable um, size. Then uh, once it's get to be small enough to fit in a single kind of computer, then I could use anything I want. I could use R, MATLAB, and you know, things, Python. I don't use too much Python. I, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, most, more R and, and MATLAB, and, and Python is, uh, I heard, is, getting, is pretty popular. So It's getting really yeah. popular, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people getting very yeah. um, you know, emotional about it. And that's yes. why it's a fun question, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, people are always like, oh, yeah, oh, it's the best thing ever. And then you dive in a little bit, yeah. <laughs> when, when would you choose MATLAB over R? When would or, I? Or over MATLAB. Yeah. Mm, I think R has a little, it depends on the packages, mm -hmm. right? If I'm trying to, it depends on what kind of problem I'm trying to solve, right? If So R probably has more open source uh, packages. So if I wanted to do, Certain, um, uh, you know, uh, deep learning or something that I would, you know, there's R package, I would just use that. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm kind of use them pretty, you know, back and forth. You know, like MATLAB is, is the syntax is a little cleaner and mm -hmm. it's, it's more obvious, you know, and uh, so, you know, it has, doesn't have as much, you know, uh, open source packages. As, right. Yeah. Cool. Pretty expensive commercial product if, you, yes. if you're an individual, right? Yeah. I mean, for a company. Yeah. Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> but um, but yeah. So it it goes. I think you know, depending on what, like I said, you know, if it's a simple kind of small data set, I would just even use Excel, right? It's just, mm -hmm. It actually does its job, you know. So well, I'm glad yeah. you're liking spreadsheets. We happen to build some. 